So what is the hard problem of consciousness? Well, this was famously put forth by David Chalmers, might be 20 years ago now, where he was describing um, re research and consciousness, and he just kind of said, well, that's the easy problem. And he began this distinction between the easy and the hard problem. The easy problem of consciousness is just taking all the physiological states that correlate with different conscious experiences. So we've known for about a hundred years that the firing patterns of neurons, those processing cells in the brain, that if they're, pro if they're firing at a very slow rate, that is associated with deep sleep and lower states of consciousness, at least on a simplistic level. And as you speed that firing pattern up, uh, you get closer and closer to maybe 40 uh, or more uh, beats per second, then you have a very high degree of awareness and focus. And of course, this is one of the research studies where they found that uh, Olympic type meditators uh, had a very pronounced degree of gamma, this very fast f firing pattern of neurons, and they um, were in that state. Uh, so m most of us ordinary people just reach that once in a while, uh, but they were in this state for prolonged periods of time. But that's the easy problem. The hard problem of consciousness is understanding, unpacking, dissecting consciousness so it's something that we can understand. And what's implicit in all this, and it's a very, I'm actually going into this quite a bit in my next book because it seems to be a really big problem that plagues consciousness researchers. They, they're, they're brilliant minds and, and they're brilliant thinking minds. And a thinking mind rarely appreciates that it's viewing the world from a very limited perspective. The thinking mind can think one thought at a time. The thinking mind has a very narrow uh, perception and a narrow attention span. And so what happens is it, you come up with what many have talked about as this Newtonian view of the world, you know, of, of like A causes B and it's all linear and it's all causality. Uh, but that's the thing that the thinking mind can understand. And so uh, that's a world of thinking mind that has been to some degree successful. I mean, we've created a lot of, we've manipulated and changed the world based on the processes of this thinking mind. But the ego associated with the think, thinking mind is, remember, it also put us at the center of the universe. And it also believes that because it believes that there is a problem out there, there is a problem. And so the real hard problem of consciousness isn't a hard problem at all. It's only a hard problem to the thinking mind. So the thinking mind is what has the, this, I believe, an unpenetrable uh, um, problem with consciousness because the way the thinking mind is limited, it would never understand the vastness of consciousness. Um, it's like thinking a drop of water can understand the ocean. So, but there are a lot of hard problems for the thinking mind, not just consciousness, love, meaning, um, humor, uh, many emotions, a sarcasm, a favorite in our house. Uh, these are all far too complex for the thinking mind to dissect and, and, and manipulate and, and consider in a linear fashion. So the, the hard problem of consciousness, here's the trick of it all. The hard problem of consciousness is only thinking that there's a problem in the first place. From the thinking mind's perspective, it looks out into the world and sees nothing but problems. And it sees these as very um, limited, uh, narrow, linear issues. But that's not what consciousness is at all. And so the thinking mind is in a particular problem because it thinks that it is. And this is true for all thinking problems, you know? If you think you have a thinking problem, you do. And if you think there's a hard problem to consciousness, well, there is. But it's not just a hard problem, it's an impossible problem. But here's what I want you to consider. How do you know there's a, there's a problem at all? Why do we think that there's a problem to be solved? Why, in the first place, do we ever think that consciousness is a problem to be solved? Why do we think love or the meaning of, of your life is a problem to be solved rather than an experience to be had. And when you 
get past the limitations of the thinking mind, which is a very difficult thing for many of us in the West. Um, that is the solution to the hard problem of consciousness and realizing that it's only a hard problem for the thinking mind, that there isn't a problem in the first place. And when you get to that, you can start experiencing that this problem-solving thinking mind isn't even who you are. It's just this kind of parasitic thing that just sort of attached itself to many of us human beings. And so that's my take on the hard problem of consciousness. It's really just a hard problem from the thinking mind's perspective. Unfortunately for the thinking mind, it's really the impossible problem.